Welcome to the program once more. My name is Abdia Zizashim. Let's kickstart this bulletin at the coastal region where two road construction vehicles were on Sunday burnt following an attack by suspected Al-Shabaab militants at the Milohoi in Lamu Garrison Road. Confirming the incident, Lamu Police Commissioner Irungu Masharia said the police engaged the militants in a gang battle before the militants eventually fled through the forest. Masharia added that the militants attempted to invade a police camp situated adjacent to the establishment below Belonging to road construction company. The police boss further added that there were, however, no casualties from the incident. Now let's come back to the capital and head over to Parliament buildings where former President Mwai Kibaki today joined other Kenyans in mourning the late former President Daniel Toreiti Charip Moi at Parliament buildings here in Nairobi. However, journalists were barred from covering Kibaki while viewing the body of Moi. Here's Jeff Haimba with that report. Early in the morning in the streets of Nairobi, a Kenyan from all walks of life streamed at the Parliament building. Just to view the body of the late former president, Daniel Toroi teacher up In a long queue stretching from the Treasury House, penetrating at the Supreme Court of Kenya, City Hall up to the Parliament, Kenyans were not left behind for the only available chance to pay tribute to the man who ruled Kenya for 24 good years. I was in the state of Nikambua, I was in Ugali. Nasema pia nilitafuta mboga, nikakosa kwa hivyo mbado ndarudi baadaye. Kwa hivyo zizi tulikuwa naenda state house. Zizi a very generous man. Akikutana na mtu yoyote, mkimbia ye, mkiwa shule. Na teso aliwapatia district ya kwanza ya teso. Uh, ambayo bandai ligaonywa uh, marambili kwa district tena mbili. Political leaders who arrived here, including the Battle Nairobi County Governor Mike Songombuvi, poured praises to the late Moi as a heroic leader who transformed the education sector, despite others faulting him of being a dictator. Kuna wale ambaye wanasema Moi alikuwa dictator, sababu Moi alikuwa ni mzee ambaye alikuwa strict. You know, the circumstances were different when he was president and the circumstances that we have now. Yes. When he was president, the country was not opened up to a lot of democracy. And right now, we have opened up our country to a lot of democracy. And we can only advise that we use the democratic space fairly. The last speech he gave during, um, I think it was Jamhuri Day celebration at uh, Nyao National Stadium, where Mze came out very strongly and uh, said, If I was yule ambaye Kosea, I was Na kama mimi kuna mtu wamenikosea, mimi pia ni memsame. Those were very strong words which we'll never forget in the history. A foreign dignitary soldiers and the ordinary citizens posed, bowed and saluted as they passed Moe's body dressed in a dark suit, top, a velvet green plinth. Former third president of the Republic of Kenya, Moe Kibaki, is among the Kenyans who paid the last respect to Moe at the parliament buildings. The media were however barred from taking pictures of Kibaki who joined the families, led by Rongai member of parliament Raymond Moe and Gideon Moe. Lakini like Moe was able to build so many schools, so many churches through Harambi, through fundraising. So to kepeleka pesa kwa, kwa kanisa, kupitia kwa magunia, tunapeleka kwa sabu sisi ni watoto wa nyayo. And he put heavy investments in education and it is witnessed all over. Uh, apparently those schools he mentored are uh, named after his name. Whether you Since Moi died early this week, his body has been in the hands of the military who are preparing for a state send-off on Wednesday. After viewing of the body which ended at 5 p.m., the military prepared the body to be taken back at the Lee funeral home. In a well-calculated move, they showed all their artistic styles as they marched slowly up to this special vehicle. The military guard escorted the board of Moe through the streets of Nairobi and to the Lee funeral, drawn on a gun carriage and wrapped in a national flag. It is the second day for the Kenyans to pay their tribute for the fallen hero. Mze Daniel Toroitich Arab Moi, the second president of the Republic of Kenya, who is expected to be buried on Wednesday this week. Reporting for Ebru TV, I'm Jeff Haimba.
Jeff Hayamba, thank you for that report. And don't forget that tomorrow is the last day of viewing the body of the late former president, that is Daniel Toroitich Arab Moi, and we'll bring you the latest from Parliament buildings. But still within Parliament buildings, the National Assembly will hold a special sitting on Monday to allow members of the Parliament to pay tribute to the late former president, Daniel Toroitich Arab Moi. MPs were set to resume sittings on Tuesday, February 11th, but the government has declared the day a public holiday to allow Kenya attend the memorial service of Mze Moy. The National Assembly Majority Leader Adan Duale has called for a special sitting of Parliament on Monday, February 10th. Duale said the legislators will use the sitting to consider a motion to alter the House calendar to propose a resumption on the February 13th instead of February 11th. Duale said the sittings will also be used to read Uhuru's message regarding the appointment of new cabinet secretaries and the principal secretaries who were appointed while the House was on recess. I like to ask the question number zero. This is in view of the presidential proclamation on February 4th regarding the demise of former President Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi. Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi has gazetted Tuesday as a holiday for Kenyans to mourn Moi. President Uhuru Kenyatta led Kenyans in viewing Moi's body at Parliament buildings on Saturday. Head of Public Service Joseph Kinua said members of the public will view the body on Sunday and Monday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. In January, Uhuru made changes to his cabinet naming Mutai Kagwe and Betty Maina as nominees to the head of the Health and Industrialization Ministries respectively are also going to be discussed. Other appointments made include John Weru Trade PS, Juan Ouma PS Vocational and Technical Training, Mary Kimunye Public Service PS, Simon Nabukwesi University Education and Research PS, Solomon Kitungu Transport PS and Enoch Mumanyi Onyango as Physical Planning PS. Let's once more head to the coast where condolence book has been opened at the coast regional headquarters Uhuru Nakazi building in Mombasa for those wishing to pay tribute to retired President Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi who died on Tuesday, February 4, 2020 at Nairobi Hospital. Coast Regional Commissioner John Elungata has encouraged Mombasa residents and those from other counties to find them and sign the book as a sign of respect to the former long-serving president. He said similar condolence books have been opened at at County Commissioner's offices in Tana River, Lamu, Kwale, Kilifi, and Taita Taveta counties. Kweka sahihi kitabu cha maombolezo kutokana na kufariki kwa raisi wetu wa pili eh, Daniel Troiti Charap Moy. Na tunawaomba wale ambao eh, wanajua historia inji yetu pamoja na watoto wao waje kusaini kikitabu waweze kuonyesha eh, vile wanavyomkumbuka rais aliyetuacha hivi vitabu vimefunguliwa katika kila ofisi ya county Lamu Kilifi Tana River eh, Kwale Mombasa eh, apa uhuru na kazi na pia Taita Taveta na tunaomba wale wananchi ambao wanatembelea ofisi hizo waweze kutuwekea sahihi ili tuweze kukumbuka jinsi wanavyomkumbuka rais wetu ambaye ametuacha. Asante. Alikuwa ni rais uh, mpenda amani na alikuwa ni mfano bora katika uh, dunia nzima kwenye uongozi. Uh, kwanza mimi ningefanya kumkumbuka uh, rais Daniel Arap Moi toka tukiwa watoto. Sisi tulikuwa katika familia maskini sana ambapo kwamba wakati mwingine hata ile kupata ile kiamsha kinywa pia ilikuwa ni tatizo lakini kwa vile tulikuwa tupata maziwa skuli ilikuwa yani sisi tunapata ile morali ya kwenda skuli now to other news, four Chinese nationals are in police custody, including a chef captured on a video caning a Kenyan at Ches Wu restaurant in Kileleshu, Nairobi. The video showed a senior Chinese hotel officer whipping a Kenyan waiter over allegations of reporting late to work. The video was recorded at Ches Wu restaurant in Kileleshu, Nairobi last week. DCI directors said they had arrested the four after reports that a man of Asian descent was assaulting a male employee. Deng Halan and Chinese 
national who works at the hotel as a chef but does not have a work permit was arrested. Two other chefs, Chang Yopeng and Kwan, who hold expired visas, were also arrested. Eight Kenyans who work at the hotel were also escorted to Kilimani Police Station for further interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> now to Kitui County where a 17-year-old girl from Kasala location, Ikuda sub-county in Kitui County is there to join Form 1 of a lack of fees even uh, after managing to get 361 marks in last year's KCPE. Sheila Ndida Maulua, who is a partial orphan, was the second leading student in last year's class of 30 students at Mid Hill Primary School. Sheila, who is a third born in her family of five children, narrated that this is the second time she has done KCPE due to lack of school fees. Here's Kaindo Stefano with that report. Sheila Ndinda's mother, Elizabeth Kilaka, who is a peasant farmer, explains life has been hard for her in raising five children alone in a single muddy walled room. According to Kilaka, the girl would sometimes go to school without meals as she couldn't afford three meals a day. Kilaka pointed out that as a family, they really hope to educate Sheila until when the husband got sick and passed away last year on February. She spent a lot of money on the treatment of her husband, forcing her to sell three quarters of the piece of land so as to settle the medical bill. Mimi ni meolewa, lakini mwakajana, nisee ya liaga. Mwesu wa pili, tareo kumi na sita, 2019. Sasa kutoka hapo, nilikuwa nangangana, nangangana vile naweza kumusomeja amalizo ya iti, akamaliza kwa hipo, sasa kwa hapa nyumbani, siwezi tafanya nini. Kilaka fears for her fourth born son who is in class 8 and very bright. She fears that the boy might pass very well in KCPE and fail to join Form 1 due to lack of fees. Therefore, she is pleading for help from any well-wisher to help her daughter acquire secondary education and achieve her dreams. According to the girl, she worked so hard to manage to get 361 marks despite the challenges in her family. Now she's appealing for aid from any well-wisher to enable her go to Mulango School in Kitui County where she was selected to attend. Her class teacher, Justin Nyamai, termed Sheila as a very disciplined girl who would go places if supported to pursue her education as the girl is always dedicated to her work. Nyamai also narrated how sometimes they had to assist the girl in school 
by donating food and clothing to her family, which is very needy. Nyamai further urged any well-wisher who has been touched by the girl's story to help her achieve her dreams. If there is any well-wisher who is wishing to support this girl in her education, please, Mr. IDA. Reporting for Ebru TV, I'm Kaindo Stefano. Quite a sad scene there from Kitui. Let's hope that young, that young girl will get the help she requires. Now let's head over to Elgeo Marakwet, where Elgeo Marakwet County Executive Committee member for Health Kiprono Chip Kok had a difficult time of explaining to the Special Senate Committee that is in charge of the medical equipment leased by the national government why the new equipments are still locked up instead of being used to offer services to residents. This is after reports emerged that the two of the equipments are not being used at the Etenri Referral Hospital. Here's Winnie Lubembe with that report. The Special Senate Committee mandated to inspect how county governments are utilizing the equipment visited a 10 referral hospital in Elgeo Marakwet County to inspect the equipment. Variation. According to the committee, Elgeo Marakwet County government ordered three medical and surgical equipment in the year 2016-2017. However, only one equipment is being used while the other are still locked up. We have from Ministry of Health and what we found here is totally different. Because uh, the report we have from Ministry of Health, it shows that they have only received two theater equipments. But apparently the information we have, uh, they have received five. So this is an information that is lacking also at the national level and uh, maybe we'll ask the ministry to clarify on it. The committee chair and ICO law senator Fatma Dulo has termed the situation as heartbreaking. Three equipments that came later, it was at the request of the county government. And it is really absurd for the county government to ask for those equipments and they are still in the boxes. And Kenyans are not getting service delivery. And yet the county government is paying 200 million at the source every year. And this is the complaint we have all over the country. The county's health, CECM, Kiprono Chepkok, defended the state at the hospital, saying they are doing all they can to get the equipment operational in the next two weeks. The committee also found that the city scan machine is also not working, forcing residents to seek services elsewhere. We are being told uh, there is a city scan that was supplied by the supplier, but uh, unfortunately there is... It's not working. And that is the only CT scan that is available in this county. And this is simply because of power, which might have required about 3 million or 2 million. And yet the county government has a budget of 1.8 and the Department of Health. It's really very sad. When they made that uh, request, they had not done due diligence in terms of the capacity of their power to operate the machines. It is alleged that this case has been caused by the contractor who did a shoddy job paralyzing medical services at the hospital. Winnie Lubembe for Ebru TV. <laughs> The locust plague has defied intervention despite multiple efforts by the government to control its farmers in most parts of Mwingi North Sub-County have been forced to employ workers at their farms in a bid to ensure that when the locusts invade the farms, they are immediately chased. Moving at a speed of over 130 kilometers per day, the government has been unable to contain the insects that have caused panic in 15 counties including Mandera, Wajia, Marsabit, Garissa, Isiolo, Meru, Samburu, Laikipia, Machakos, Baringo and Kitui. Even though the government insists that the desert locust invasion situation is under control, a report by the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO paints a different picture. In a report, FAO said the locusts had started new breeding, which will cause more infestation. According to farmers who have been highly affected by the massive locust invasion, farmers, especially those who do not spend all the time at home, have been parting with 300 shillings daily for a single worker. It's dangerous because it's feeding on vegetation. 
also feeding mostly on songam and uh, legumes, uh, leaves, which is posing a lot of threat to our food security. Uh, I fear for my people because uh, if the situation continues, then it means my, uh, the area will be uh, eaten up. The issues of the locust, uh, there has been uh, various spring in various areas, but various swamps have also been invested. Kitui is uh, largely covered. Mwani member of County Assembly Johnson Kanalu stated that most teachers from his ward are incurring losses as they are forced to part with 900 shillings every day to pay for three workers at their farms who are on standby in case there will be a locust invasion. Which did not, that chemical did not work as per our expectations. Then they changed to a different chemical which we understand the, it was more effective than the first one but unfortunately uh, it, we, have, we, we understand they have run short of the chemical. Farmers say the massive invasion has caused enough losses and the government needs to move with high speed and spread the huge storms wreaking havoc. Early this month, government spokesman Cyrus Oguna said the state has laid down mechanisms and procedures to contain the infestation. He said a total of 145 officers from Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Marsabit, Samburu, Kitui and Meru have been trained and deployed to undertake monitoring of the pest and also support the control team. Busara Naman for Ebru TV. Deputy President William Ruto has called upon members of the ruling party Jubilee to be united ahead of their parliamentary meeting set to take place on the 14th of this month. The meeting majorly will be about the status of the party. This comes at a time when the party has faced turbulent tides in regards to 2022 political succession. President Uhuru Kenyatta will not be attending the Friday 14th Jubilee Members Parliamentary Consultative Meeting. The meeting was to take place this Friday but was postponed following the death of the late former President Daniel Toretich Arapmoy. Ahead of the meeting, Deputy President William Ruto has urged Jubilee members to show a united front. The meeting is likely to be chaired by Deputy President William Ruto. Among the issues to be discussed are the unity of the party, upcoming Jubilee party elections and BBI politics. Biongozi wote wa taifa letu la Kenya, sisi wote tuungane na tushirikiane na tufanye kazi pamoja. Nyuma ya mwishmiwa rais katika juhudi anasofanya ya maendeleo ya taifa letu la Kenya, alikuwa pa kirinyaga juzi ya kuunganisha jamii zote watu wote wa taifa letu la Kenya. The party has faced turbulent tides, especially in regards to 2022 political succession, where some are drumming up support for Deputy President William Ruto and others are opposed to the idea. I am sure that working together, we will be able to overcome any of the challenges. A showdown looms as Keleweke and Team Tangatanga political factions are set to sit under one roof and iron out issues that are bedeviling the party and seal the evident cracks that have been witnessed within the party for some time now. The leaders have not seen eye to eye in regards to the BBI report and the various consultative meetings that have been spearheaded by ODM party leader Raila Amolo Odinga. MPs and senators allied to the deputy president claim that those meetings are gobbling up millions of taxpayers' monies while the Kileweke faction accused the deputy president of fostering disunity in the country. It remains to be seen if the meeting will resolve the challenges that have fostered disunity among the members. 
Moingi West Member of Parliament Charles Nguna has called upon the national government to ensure that all extrajudicial killings come to an end even as the country mourns the death of second president Daniel Toriti Charap Moi. According to the MP, cases of Kenyans dying in the hands of police officers is unclear circumstances are still on the rise despite such cases of extrajudicial cases being, due, high, being high during the Moi era when police were thought to use excessive force against civilians. I say that today it is a sad day because I'm buried one of the most important youth in my area, in my constituency, Winky West, who was brutally murdered by policemen. And uh, I am calling upon all the Kenyans across the fight to condemn the issue of extrajudicial killing. It has dated there since independence and it is high time uh, we start uh, bringing these people who are responsible for killing innocent souls uh, to books. We know so many people are being murdered, but this goes without actually being questioned. Or rather, people committed in being uh, uh, not being changed. So I am calling upon uh, our system in this country to make sure this issue of judicial killing is totally uh, ceased and it's ceased immediate with immediate effect. Now, internationally, U.S. President Donald Trump and his allies this week celebrated his acquittal by the Senate on two articles of impeachment, marking the co conclusion of a saga that deepened partisan divisions in the country for months. Trump supporters say now the president can get back to work. An emboldened President Trump took a victory lap this week, thanking his Republican allies and vilifying his enemies. His only apology was to his family. For having them have to go through a phony, rotten deal by some very evil and sick people. The speech was nothing like the one given by President Bill Clinton, who was also acquitted on two articles of impeachment in 1999. I want to say again to the American people how profoundly sorry I am for what I said and did to trigger these events. Senate Democrats all Mr. voted Barrasso, to convict Trump on charges of guilty. abuse of power and obstruction States of Congress. With one exception, majority Republicans all voted to acquit. Some say Trump's indignation over the impeachment process is warranted. I can certainly understand the president's frustration. I mean, keep in mind that for the first two years of his, uh, of his presidency, he was being accused of all kinds of wrongdoing, uh, specifically that he and his campaign had colluded with the Russian government to interfere with the 2016 election. The Critics foresee an unchecked and unprecedented expansion of presidential power. So he has, a, in many ways, a blank check to perform, behave, say whatever he wants. I think we're going to see a president that's going to become more divisive, more uh, off the cuff. That message has been echoed by Democratic presidential contenders. Future presidents can say to a governor, hey, I got some infrastructure money for you, but you're not going to get your fair share unless I get your endorsement. Or go to China and say, hey, China, I need some help in my coming election. See what kind of dirt you could dig up on my opponent and we'll give you a better trade agreement. Despite his acquittal, impeachment will always be a part of Trump's legacy. It, it is a cloud over his presidency and it is part of a bigger cloud. There are questions about this man's honesty and integrity. Trump said he wants to continue doing things for our great people that everybody said couldn't be done, adding that fights with Democrats are not over. But I'm sure they'll try and cook up other things. They'll go through the state of New York. They'll go through other places. They'll do whatever they can. In March, the Supreme Court will hear arguments on cases involving the president's attempts to block congressional subpoenas for his financial information and a New York grand jury subpoena seeking 10 years of his tax returns. Patsy Wida Kuswara, VOA News. 
Welcome to the world of sport. Isiolo Starlets and Tumaini School from Makweni are the new Chapadimba Eastern Region champions. The girls' final Isiolo saw off Chuka University while Tumaini beat Black Panthers from Meru Central in the boys' final held today at the Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos. Isiolo Starlets and Tumaini School have received a cash reward of 200,000 Kenya shilling each and an opportunity to represent Eastern Region at the national final set for June 2020 at Momo Stadium in Mombasa County. Wikinesi yetu ya jana yetu tulifanya correction asubuhi tulikuja tulifanya zoezi roading si kwa field na tulijua kuwa tutashinda na tulijikakamua sana na tukapata ushindi. Alafu kushinda pia ni furaha kubwa sana kwa sababu tuliposhinda zone peke yake tukienda siolo tuli, tulienda saa moja nusu hivi usiku kutoka Meru. Tulipata watu wametuongojea wakiselebrate mpaka saa 3 tutao. Sasa hivi tunaenda national hata kama wajua wanafurahi hivi na mtani uko wakisikia ni furaha peke yake. Imekuwa poa cause tangu tuanze training last year tuko tumetrainia nationals na tuko tumetrainia regionals finals so kushinda kwetu ilikuwa tu ni kitu tulikuwa tumetrainia ile level tumeenda pale hakika si level ya mchezo na timu zote ambazo zina qualify kwenda pale lazima zikuwe zimefanya kazi ya ziada hivyo basi lazima pia sisi tujitume wachezaji wangu pale nitakuwa na kazi mingi sana pale ya improve kwa sababu uh, level lazima yende na quality pia Elsewhere, Bitco United have today narrowed the gap between them and league leaders Nairobi City Stars following a 2-1 win against Moranga Seal at the Thika Stadium. Bitco wins breached the gap between league leaders Nairobi City Stars by 7 points as their points tallied to 48. This comes as City Starlets fell 3-1 to the Coast Estima study at the second season of Higa United. Meanwhile, trounced Modern Coast Rangers 4-1 at the Mumias Sports Complex to move to third with 42 points tumengengana but pia unajua pia kama leo wamepata si urahisi sana lakini wala deserve kushinda kwa sababu wamepata two chances wamefunga wame si tumekuo na chance karibu sita tu ki try so at the end of the day wako na siku njema playing 30 minutes mkiwa less na team kama maranga seal team ambayo iko top 10 eh, it was going to be a difficult match for us but na thank you wame prove a point eh? to me i think wame prove a point wame prove ni team uh, to watch so easy vile tuko na vile tunaenda i think uh, god willing na fatu kwa premier league from Siaya County have received jerseys and other in-kind provisions courtesy of Football Kenya Federation in partnership with gaming firm Odibets. This comes as the firm's tour of the Upper Rift, Western and Nyaza region enters its home stretch. The partnership whose main focus is at grassroots six to nurture and support football talents in county leagues. All teams participating in the county leagues across the nation are going to receive this sponsorship. Uh, they are, they, we, we are approximating around more than 3,000 teams to be able to receive uh, this sponsorship. However, uh, by end of March, we are going to bring uh, the remaining uh, batch of the, uh, the uniforms and the training equipment and the balls so that each team playing in the county league can be able to benefit from this. And finally, the 2020 season opener KCB Guru Nanak Rally has today lived to its billing as the toughest leg of the Kenya National Rally Championship in an epic battle that has seen Car Flash Tundo clock one hour, 45 minutes and 17 seconds consecutively Guru Nanak win. Now Baldev Charger emerged second navigated by Ravi Soni clocking one hour, 48 minutes and 13 seconds ahead of third place on Car Rai who clocked one hour, 56 minutes and 17 seconds. Six-time rally champion Ian Duncan emerged fourth with Jamsit Chana, Sochania, Evans Kavisi, Yasin Nasir finished in 5th and 8th position. The next round of the KCB Rally will be held to Nakuru County during the weekend of 8th and 9th March 2020. It was a, the event itself for us, uh, a fun complete, um, coming second overall. Um, we will start to change the puncher, the stages where we will watch a lot of time. Coming third is never the best, but it's... Um, for the day that we've had, I think it's a good, good, uh, good position. We will go for the win. Um, I think we proved we had it. And that brings us to the end of our bulletin of Ibru TV News, 9 p.m. My name is Abdiaziz Ashim. Do join us tomorrow in our subsequent bulletins. Of course, the New Day team. For now, good evening. <laughs>